what we saw in court today, closing arguments from the state, very, very chock-a-block full with information. What do you think was crucial? Well, they clearly came out very confident today, and you could see by how expansive their closing argument was that they were really trying to cover all of their bases, ever aware of the fact that they have the burden of proof, and it's beyond a reasonable doubt. And that is made all the more difficult when you have a circumstantial case, which they have. Uh, a lot of metaphors coming from Harry Nell today. He said that there were feathers of circumstantial evidence, but altogether that could weigh in terms of justice. And he also talked about a baker's dozen, 13 inconsistency in Oscar Pistorius' own testimony. Also, he picked that apart when he tried to, didn't he? Well, that has been his key strategy throughout this trial. He has focused in on a number of, when taken in isolation, small inconsistencies, but he's arguing they should be taken accumulatively and that when there's such a track record of inconsistencies the only reasonable deduction the judge can make is that he must be lying because he is guilty and that's why he was trying to suggest that the balance was swayed in his favor when they were all taken together the snowball of lies he said and was when you say it was it was specifics about Oscar Pistorius saying he was in one position or perhaps not in another position uh, how do you think uh, Kerry Nell performed today. Do you think the judge was convinced? It was difficult to read her, of course. He undoubtedly had a very strong day today. I would actually say, from a lawyerly perspective, his strongest day of the trial. But of course, we've only seen half of the picture. So we'll only really be able to know ultimately how enduringly powerful his narrative was once we can compare and contrast it with the defense. And also, we got a snippet of that because the last half an hour, a little bit of extra court time, we had the defense come in and, and also come out very strong and tried to then pick apart a lot of Harry Nell's own statements, uh, really criticizing what they say uh, were him ignoring, perhaps, ob uh, objective material fact. As, as the defense called it. Well, the defense did exactly what we expect them to do. They don't need to prove their whole version. They simply need to raise reasonable doubt. So they went in straight to the issues that they considered to be the core, the heart of the matter. Things like the neighbors hearing screaming and phone records suggesting that they're mistaken, and also the police's management of the crime scene, which strikes straight at the heart of the state's ability to meet their burden of proof. Because of course, if they haven't investigated all possible versions, how can they say that their version is the only reasonable possibility? And we talk about the timeline, and again, I think the phone records uh, are, are going to be so crucial because this defense, at least, alleges that that forms the framework of what happened. And they're suggesting that the state is ignoring the first set of sounds and, 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 and skipping that out. So there again, we're going back to that issue of who screamed when and what were those sounds. Were they shots or cricket bats hitting a door? back again to the same story we've talked about for the last 40 days of this trial. Absolutely, and the phone records, as the defense themselves pointed out, are one of the few pieces of objective evidence that the trial, that the court has at their disposal. So really, by the end of this closing argument, we will have a clear idea of which neighbors were mistaken and which weren't, because they either made their calls after River Stenkamp was already deceased or before. And one of those versions will render either the state's case or the defense's case practically practically impossible. Okay, again, all that should very much down to the neighbours and what they heard. Kelly Phelps from the University of Cape Town, as always, thanks uh, for her analysis. Uh, interesting point coming out, particularly because Harry Nell, the state, is relying, and they've admitted it, on uh, the versions of the neighbours uh, that they say, well, of what the neighbours heard. Uh, and, and again, the defence coming out and saying, is this, about right, about, is this about reliability or credibility? And we're going to hear this argument over the neighbours, uh, what they heard, when they heard at the timeline, in far more detail uh, on Friday when the defence continues with their closing argument. Very importantly, also, the judge will most likely give a date for when she's going to give her verdict, uh, and it could be in the next few weeks. So we'll know that by the end of Friday.